Him. He's live now, Democratic West Virginia Senator Joe Manchin. Senator, how you doing? Good morning hey, to good, you. Good. How are you? Good? I'm fine, thank you. What's the truth behind the CIA story? What do we need to understand? First of all, it should not be in the press. Uh, that person's uh, identity and basically their safety is, is foremost, uh, utmost important to all of us. But we have 17 intelligence agencies. I was on Intel Committee. And they're unbelievable in their dedication and commitment to this great country of ours, keeping us safe and, 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 and free. Uh, with that, we depend on the intel we get. And now, uh, having a situation to where that could be compromised and we're not getting the intel that's needed to keep a Russian at bay, to keep our elections open and free, uh, is very concerning to me. If this all unfolded in late 2016, what was the Obama team doing about it? I mean, if they, if they knew that their informant in Russia had information that Putin was trying to meddle in the election of that year, and then they pull him out of Russia to protect him and his life uh, for his own safety. What, what was that administration doing to keep the election well, secure? I can t Bill, only thing I can say about the Obama administration at the end there, if they had information and they knew that all 17 intelligent agents, agencies were basically concurring that Russia was involved and they had, they had that information because of the person we had that was helping, and there was no dispute. They should have acted and acted quick and basically come out publicly with what was going on and not wait until afterwards. That was a mistake that was made a horrible mistake. And we're paying that price right now. And it basically it makes consternation with the entire intelligent agencies, the most dedicated human beings I've ever met that are committed to our, uh, our well-being and safety. But it's a, it's a horrible situation. And to play it out into the press of the people that are making sacrifices to keep us safe, Bill's not right. Okay, we'll hear from John Brennan hopefully at some point and figure out an answer on that one. On gun legislation now, you had a yeah. meeting with the president last week. Uh, you came out of that meeting with an optimistic tone. Why well, I'm optimism? always optimistic, Bill. Uh, on that, we're still talking. The president was very engaged for over a half hour. He was listening to his staff, and he was listening to me explain what we have always said. The 2013 bill that I drafted back then and Pat Toomey as my partner, it was very clear that we are not infringing on any law-abiding gun owner's rights. A law-abiding gun owner is not going to sell their gun to a stranger, to someone who's mentally uh, insane, and someone who basically is not a responsible citizen. But when we go to commercial transaction, we don't know who those people are. So over 80% of the people support. Gun owners support. What we are doing is right and correct to basically make sure all gun purchases during commercial transactions are background checked. I told President Trump, I said, I told him, Bill, and I said, Mr. President, there's not a person I know in America that believes that Donald Trump will infringe on their Second Amendment rights or take their guns away or allow a registry to happen. We're not going to do that at all, none of us. Uh, but we need your support. Without his support, Bill, I don't think anything We're hearing from Senate Republicans. They want to know what uh, the White House will support, too, as well. Uh, there are those in D.C. who believe this conversation is disingenuous. Liz Cheney's one of them with Brett last night. She said this. I have watched the Democrats time and time again play political games with these issues, uh, use these, you know, horrific tragedies that we see for their own political purposes with no regard at all to America's constitutional rights. That the president, uh, that uh, uh, Mr. McConnell, Leader McConnell, Leader McCarthy, all of us in the House and the Republican Party will not do anything that's going to violate America's constitutional rights. So it comes back to the question about what your, what your ideas would do to stop the killers in Dayton, Ohio, and El Paso, Texas. Would it even do that? On mine, Bill? Yes, you are, Senator. Go okay. Ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, you know, everything that we're doing here, as far as the mental illness that we have and mental illness that we have, the president can put a piece of legislation together using what we have done already, not infringing. And I just respectfully disagree with Lynn on that. There is no way that we're infringing on the constitutional rights. We're protecting the Second Amendment. But you've got to protect America also. And what we're looking at is, should we identify people, basically straw purchases, who are buying illegally from someone who has not been able to get a, a, uh, a background check approved? Are we allowing someone who is mentally incompetent or having problems to be identified so we can protect them and society as a whole and their own families? There's some common sense things, bipartisan, that we should be able to do. And we're not able to have a concerted conversation on that or intelligent conversation. It's all based on where's your base, who's going to lose what votes, and this. I can assure you the bill that we put together, the mansion to me, has over 85 percent approval. And that's with gun owners and everyone else saying if you go to a commercial transaction, gun show or on the internet, 
don't you think you ought to know who wants to buy that gun uh -huh. for what purpose and what their background and, is? That's all we're talking. And what the house No passed. family, yeah. hey Bill, no family can be infringed upon. Family transfers are all protected. Individual transfers are protected. Commercial transactions should have background checks. Thank you, sir, for your time. Senator Joe Manchin, Democrat from West Virginia. Big issue back home in your state. I know you know that. Yes, sir. Thank you for coming on today, Senator. Thanks, we'll talk Bill, again for having me.